For this demonstration, I'm using a photo I took from a park here in my hometown of South Carolina called Palmetto Island County Park. This photo I took in the fall, so it has a lot of golden and brown colors uh, in the marsh fields. I am primarily going to reference the photo for the colors found this time of the year. I would like to bring more focus to the tree line, so I'm making the trees a little larger than the photo, and this will also help reduce the size of the sky. I am going to speed this up a little bit as I map in some of the water in the marsh field. I'm not too concerned about the shape of the water, but I do want to make sure that the banks have straight lines and angles to achieve level water. I'm starting out using a very dark green to block in the areas of the trees where I need my darkest values and I'll use it along the edges of the grasses at the water line. I'll speed this process up here just a little bit. When drawing the shapes of the banks of the water, just use a vertical up and down strokes to achieve the edge of the grasses uh, along the water. Now that I've blocked in the darkest values, I want to add some of the lighter values to the sky area. It will help establish a base to add sky colors over later. Many of the tips and techniques I will be demonstrating I've learned from Karen Margulis on her uh, YouTube channel. Be sure to check her site out for many uh, videos on painting grasses and marshes. I want to be sure that I bring in some of the sky values into our water reflections. I'm going to speed this up and switch to an orange color to bring some color into our grasses rather than just using all greens in our painting. The autumn grasses have a lot of orange and gold undertones in them, so I want to add these colors to our base foundation of our underpainting. I won't be using a wet alcohol underpainting for the demonstration, but I will be blending these colors together with a piece of foam to give it a blurry blended appearance. I have also used a cool shade of blue to represent the trees in the distant background. Now that I've blended this area, i am added a little more green to the grasses and I want to reapply the really dark green uh, values to the trees and the edges of our water line. So I'm now adding the second layer of color to our grasses and tree lines. Now that I have reestablish some of the dark values along the banks of the water. I'd like to come back with a very dark uh, maroon color to add a darker shade to the trees and grasses. I'll add some of that brownish red color to the banks of the water and 
once I blend it, it will bring some of the autumn colors uh, into the tall grasses. I'm going to begin shaping the trees with a lighter shade of green. And I will add a very light shade of green over the distant trees in the background. I'll add a very subtle soft shade of green to the very distant tree line, but I don't want to overwork that area. I would like to develop the sky area before I move on to the foreground trees and grasses. I'm using an ultramarine blue to bring in some bolder colors to the sky area. I don't want to fill in the sky area with just one color of blue. I'll use a combination of greens and lighter shades of blue and white to enhance the skyline. So rather than just using the aquamarine blue, I've switched to the aqua greenish blue pastel. I want to fill in the entire skyline with color before I begin blending. So for my final color, I'm adding a light shade of blue to the top of the skyline. Next, I want to cut in some sky around the top of the tree line using my light blue pastel. The sunlight is filtering behind the distant trees, so I'm going to switch to a white pastel to add some light shining behind the trees. So now I'm going to switch to a very light blue to fill in the last uh, hole we have in the sky before blending these colors together. I want to clean up the edges around the distant tree lines and cut in a little bit of sky into the uh, background edges of the trees. I'm going to use the flat side of my white pastel to lightly cover the entire sky to blend some of these colors together with the white pastel. So now the skyline is completed with a very rich base of colors that will blend together very nicely. I am using a soft sponge applicator to blend the sky colors together. You can purchase these applicators on Amazon and I will be sure to leave a link in the description area below. The pipe foam insulation uh, is a little abrasive and tends to remove color from the surface so that's why I wanted to blend with a softer sponge applicator. I'm going to keep the light orange for the distant marsh and I'm switching to a darker rusty color to begin building the base colors of the tall grasses. I'm using a horizontal stroke for some of the distant grasses and I will continue using a vertical stroke for the taller grasses in the foreground. I'm going to begin developing the water area and some of the 
cast shadows created from the tall grasses. I'm going to add some light green bushes to the foreground of the tree lines. This will add a little more form and depth to our tree lines. I'm going to add some blue color to our water reflecting from the sky. I'm starting with our lightest blue and blending this area a little bit. The color along the banks of the grasses will be a darker shade of blue. Now I'll use my little finger to pull some of the colors in the bank of the grasses into the water for reflections. I'm switching to a light violet to add some sky reflections along the edges of the water. I will use the sharp edge of my very light blue to add some light reflections on the surface of the water. I'm going to shape the trees with a lighter shade of green to give the leaves more fullness in the trees. I'm going to add a horizontal stroke of green to the base of these tree lines and blend a little bit of black to create some dark shadows beneath the tree branches. I want to begin developing the foreground grasses with some greens and goldenrod colors. I don't want the autumn color grasses to be too intense, so I do want them to show through as I apply some green pastel to our grasses. I'm using a light green pastel pencil to add some distant grasses in the far distance. So now I'd like to add some of the green grasses right over the rusty orange color we've created on our base layer. I'm going to reapply some color to the banks of our grasses with some dark blue. And I'm going to blend some of the grasses again with the pipe foam to blend some of this texture into the background. I'm using a yellowish green pastel to create some of the grass surfaces in the distant fields. I'm going to define the tree line a little bit more by adding some darker shading between some of the groups of bushes and trees. I want to build up the grasses a little more in the foreground of the painting. These grasses will be uh, taller and a little more defined than the rest of the painting. I've added some goldenrod color to the banks of the water to define those grasses a little bit more. I'm using the sharp edge of my flat sticks to create some individual strokes of grasses in the foreground. I'm going to use my white pastel stick to add some highlights and light reflections along the banks of the water 
and some light reflections on the surface. I'm going to add just a few more reflections on the water and the water is nearly complete. I'm going to touch up the sky here a little bit above the tree line and now this painting is complete. I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration and if you have please press like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.